Hello, my name is Juan Pablo Garcia and I am a third year student at Case Western Reserve University. Today, I'll be presenting the work my team and I did at the Department of Material Science and Engineering on the mechanical reliability of implantable nitinol ground field tube or DFT 10% platinum and 30% platinum wires. What is a nitinol platinum ground field tube? Nitinol alone is a metal alloy with an atomic composition of 50% nickel and 50% titanium, which has the unique property of superelasticity. We can see how the strength or the superelasticity of nitinol compares to another metal using implantable composites in the figure to the left. 316 OPM steel can reach an elastic strain of 0.8%, while the elastic strain of nitinol can reach up to 8%. But even though it has amazing superelasticity, it still lacks other properties such as radiopacity or conductivity. And this is where DFTs come in. DFTs, seen in the middle, have the ability of combining the physical and mechanical property of two alloys into a single wire. Therefore, nitinol can be the outer sheath and provide the super elasticity to the wire, while platinum can provide the radio opacity and conductivity from the core of the wire. There is abundant research available on common composites, such as chromium cobalt alloys with different inner cores like silver, gold, and platinum, but the combination of nitinol with an inner core of platinum has not been studied enough. This project aims to compare the mechanical liability of the 10% versus the 30% wire, also compare them to other common DFT wires, and then analyze the fracture surface and fatigue crack initiation points. All of this with the purpose of providing physicians, researchers, and designers with accurate data that can be used when choosing which composite is better for the specific medical application. Both the 10% and 30% DFT underwent the fully reverse flex bending fatigue test, which helped us determine how much time the wires can last under a certain amount of cyclic strain. In this video, we can see how the test works. The wire is in between the two mandibles that are moving up and down in tension and compression. And the important part of this test is that the bigger the mandrel is, the less the wires bend in tension and compression, so the more cycles it can undergo before failure. From this test, we collected how many cycles onto failure the test ran to measure the fatigue life under a certain amount of cyclic strain. Where data collected, we plotted fatigue life versus cyclic strain. The cyclic strain was calculated by dividing the wire diameter by the radius of curvature. And the fatigue life is just the number of cycles onto failure under that cyclic strain. The data sets with the arrows that we see on the right were just stop tests because of time since they got to a very high fatigue life. We can see in this graph that the nitro uh, DFT 10%, 30% platinum display very similar low and high cycle fatigue behavior between the two. Then we were able to compare the two with legacy data of common DFTs used for stimulation applications. From this graph, we can see that the general trend is that the cyclic strain decreases as the fatigue life increases. We can also see in the low cycle fatigue region that nitro DFT 10% and the 30% have a higher fatigue life than of some of the other common composites. And then in the high cycle region, we can see that the nitinol DFT 10% and 30% platinum display similar high cycle fatigue behavior to the other common DFTs. As mentioned, we were also able to do image analysis and chemical analysis on the fractured surfaces of the wire. We use scanning electron microscopy and energy dispersive X-rays. And we also use MHJ to be able to find fatigue initiation point measurements. With the analysis, we found that the crack initiation points was a non-metallic inclusion, as we can see inside here. Then using EDS, we found that those non-metallic inclusions that initiated the fracture had more titanium and oxygen and less nickel than the bulk material of the rest of the wire. Therefore, from our work, we are able to conclude that the 10% and 30% platinum exhibit similar low and high cycle fatigue behavior between the two of them. They also showed better low cycle fatigue behavior than the other common composites. The SEM images show that the fatigue fraction initiations were non-metallic inclusions, and then the EDS showed that the non-metallic inclusions were titanium rich nickel oxides. And then from these images that we can see here, the, we were able to draw up characteristic measurements for the, the fracture surfaces. These are some of the people, companies, and laboratories that I would thank for their help. Thank you.